Hey guys, welcome back to Newcast. I'm here with Matt Como, a great filmmaker. So tell us about yourself. Oh man, where, where would you like me to start? Whenever you want. Just anywhere from the top. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I guess the, the brief introduction. My name is Matt Como, um, filmmaker, director, editor, kind of all encompassing creative. Um, if you followed my work in the past, I used to work for GoPro for around three years. Uh, it was a head of social content from like 2015 to 18. And then past that, uh, have done some work in the music space for like Chainsmokers, Tiesto, Gray, Justin Blau, a bunch of people on like kind of the EDM side of things. And then uh, do a bunch of commercial work, um, have a short film coming out. So kind of kind of do a little bit of it all when it comes to like the, the visual creative side of things. Very interesting. So for how long do you think you've been working with cameras for? Oh man, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, a very, very long time. So I, I just turned 27 um, a couple of months ago and I probably think I picked up my first camera around like 13 or 14 um and have gone like pretty steady and pretty hard ever since then so over over 10 years wow you know, almost so much so that it's like i don't really uh i don't really know any different this has kind of been or not kind of this has been my life my whole life so yeah, I, I really enjoy it that's cool um so how did you learn to edit your videos well uh the most practical answer is just uh, a lot of practice. I definitely wasn't very good when I first started. My first couple of videos were just so terrible and so awful. Um, but you know, over the course of years and uh, studying the craft and just you know doing it over and over and over again, you end up you know kind of finding your own style and your own niche that you fall into. So that's kind of the the long answer short for that one. Great. So how do you get to work with like the chain smokers? Because you have done, correct me if I'm wrong, three songs for them directed. Uh, shot. But yeah, my buddy yeah. Rory directs most of them. So how did you get to work with them? My buddy Rory. Um, the, the thing is with like connections and things of like that and working mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, um, clients of that skill, I guess, you know, a lot of it is just it's based on um, obviously your uh, your skill set and your ability, but a lot of it's just relationships and doing what you say you're going to do and, and putting out a good product. So that kind of came full circle when uh, I became really good friends with my buddy Rory, who you're probably familiar with, and we just started working together a ton, and those opportunities presented themselves, and that's kind of just how that snowballed. Yeah, those. One of those closer is the most popular video that you shot, right? Mm. So th that's something pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's got like two billion views or something. something yeah. crazy. I know it has like. <laughs> it's a lot of people when you, yeah. when you really think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, how did you get your job as a former head of social content at GoPro? Uh, that's another really good question. I'll, I'll try and keep this one pretty concise, but. Um, I actually didn't get the job right away. I got turned down twice. I applied for um, an internship there and didn't get that. And then I applied for to be on like their ski and snowboard like division and didn't get that either. And then my resume kind of just landed at the right place at the right time. And I ended up getting the job. Uh, I started working there like two weeks after I graduated or a week after I graduated college. Um, just like a re really, really, really fast and uh, moved up to San Francisco from Orange County and kind of similar to like the chain smoker Rory story, you know, you just like you do good work and you're consistent over a long period of time. Like it ends up, it has, you, you end up building momentum and there's like a snowball effect to it. And that's kind of just what happened for me there. So it's tricky. Like a lot of this stuff from like the outside looking in, um, you know, you kind of have these like hallmark, like things of success that people look at, like that you can put your finger on the like, GoPro, Chainsmokers, all these things. Uh, but it's really just, it's a ton and a ton, a ton of, of work and endless and sleepless nights, like perfecting your craft 
then eventually you have like those one or two kind of like loose balls as I call them that to go out and grab and like, you know, the hard work and the opportunity meet, meets them, they intersect each other. And then that's where, you know, the success comes from. Yeah. So you send it at the right time and place. Yeah. But in like, uh, if you kind of like take that idea and you work itself backwards is you can help in some way position yourself in the right, you know, uh, in the right, in the right area at the right time, if that makes sense. Yeah, that that's really interesting. So do you think like equipment is needed for YouTube, like a big camera, stuff like that? Definitely not. If there's never been a time better than right now to shoot high quality content for as cheap as humanly possible. Um, when I was your age, like the camera technology just, it just didn't exist. And it sounds so like, I sound old, <laughs> but it's like even this even an iphone didn't like you couldn't shoot 4k video like we had these old like razor flip phones you know and like you couldn't go out and just buy like a canon dslr and like the stuff it looks really good nowadays so the uh the bottleneck of like trying to create high quality content is like completely gone now it really just is a matter of effort and how much you actually want to put into the the end product yeah, I actually agree with that. A lot of phones, like the new phones, and are like have can film 4K, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. So, do you think like also an editing software is needed? For example, people like David Dobrik, he still edits on iMovie. Like, what do you? Think? Um, that really just depends on what you're doing. Um, I think for somebody like David, and you know anyone else who kind of falls in the niche who are, who are doing like these really quickly cut uh vlogs mm -hmm. you can you can get away with iMovie you can get away with um a software on that like kind of level mm -hmm. because all you're really doing is ingesting footage you know you're, you're picking out the best spots and you're and you're just cutting it from start to finish um unfortunately or fortunately for somebody like myself that iMovie just doesn't cut it anywhere close <laughs> you know so i have to be on like you either have to be on like a premiere pro or a final cut and then you know your auxiliary um software is like an after effects a cinema 40 you know things of that caliber so it's just it really just comes down to understanding what like your need is and then you know you kind of back yourself into the software to fulfill that need so yeah from for more complicated stuff like like you do like mm -hmm. a better software is needed like from your pro or final cut totally yeah that's the, sim the simple way to put it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who introduced you to editing? Like Editing, person? I'd probably say myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, like, I mean, you shoot footage and then the first thing you wanna, you, you wanna do is just edit it. So I think the first thing I ever cut on was Windows Movie Maker. It was before I had an um, iMac or MacBook or any of these things. Uh -huh. It was just a software that was on the computer and uh, yeah, I would watch like a bunch of YouTube tutorials. That's kind of how I learned when I was like 14, 15. Um, this guy named Andrew Kramer, who has this thing called Video Copilot that I used to watch all the time. This guy named Mike Benson, who did all these like crazy snowboard edits. Um, but a lot when you're first starting out is like you're naturally, you naturally gravitate towards like the type of content that you like to watch or the music you like to listen to. And you know, I think the first part of like learning uh an artistic medium is like you you try to replicate like your your heroes so to speak so i guess uh to answer your question simply i guess i introduced myself to editing but to like really grow and learn it was through youtube tutorials it was trying to emulate uh people that i admired and aspired to be like yeah i would say that's like something similar to me because i because my dad didn't teach me how to edit he only mm. teach me how to record not music in the background. Yeah. The rest, I, I just like played around and had like and screen flow, played around. Got it. Yep. Yep. Flow. And it's like who, who taught who introduced you how to how to podcast? Um. So one of my friends interviewed a fame a former soccer player. Mm -hmm. He played in the Mexican league, and I was like, oh, I think I can do this. So I started off interviewing my brother and his three friends, which they have, they have, they have their own companies. Then I like reached out to like some creators like Moaz, Master Singer, 
and like I reached out to more creators and then one of my friends um he's in a couple of movies he's gonna be in a movie and a Netflix series so I was like I should interview him mm. um and another one of my brother's friends is in it's a has a main part in a Netflix series so I interviewed him and then one day I saw one of my bro my brother was with Amar and I, and I was like what so yeah. I asked him if like Mark can come on my podcast, and then one day he like Facetime me, and he was with Amar. Amar said yes, and a few weeks later I interviewed Amar, and then that's when like my podcast started growing a lot more after mm -hmm. that. But yeah, does that that feels good for you, doesn't it? Yeah, nice. That's awesome, man. You're taking an initiative, and that's like one of the most uh, admirable things for uh, a young person to do. Thanks. So where do you get the music from your videos? Um, it, well, it depends on, on the video uh, for like free, um, not free, sorry, royalty free tracks. Uh, you know, there's a, a whole range of websites with like Epidemic Sounds, Music Bed. Like if you just type in royalty free on Google, you'll, you'll find a bunch of sites. Mm -hmm. Luckily, because I've worked in music for so long, I have, you know, a, a decent handful of just friends that I can quite literally just get on the phone and call and, you know, have a very uh, efficient way of just getting music cleared for things I need. Um, so that's definitely a, a luxury that I exercise pretty frequently <laughs> to, get, yeah. to get the right music. And there's a lot of YouTube channels that like give copyright free music. Right. Totally. Yeah. So. They change yeah. the reverb or slow down the tempo, and technically that then qualifies it as a as a remix. So like it, it skips the music tracking software, or whatever YouTube uses. Mm -hmm. So, what motivated motivated you to start your clothing brand, Cuts Clothing? That's what. Well, I so I I actually didn't I didn't start Cuts. I I just did a collaboration with them. Um, okay. little little bit different. Um. <laughs> But uh, Steven, the CEO, is just like a, a good friend of mine. And he reached out to me like three years ago, wanting to just do like a cross collaboration. So we, I'm actually wearing one right now. Um, we just changed up the fit. I kind of, I'm very like minimal with my like style, fashion approach. I kind of mm -hmm. like, like wear the same things every day, uh, <laughs> basic colors. So we just did two, we did a long sleeve and short sleeve, just black with some red accents, which is also like my personal brand's colors. And uh, we did really well, man. We we sold out of all of our units in like five, six days. It was like in the thousands of units. So uh, yeah, very, very successful. And I still wear the shirts very frequently. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of people that would just buy simple, like white or black shirts. Totally. So, yeah. So what's your favorite film or music video you uh, created or shot? Um, you want me to answer both film and music video sure all right um music video uh i did uh one with my buddy rory for chain smokers called everybody hates me that was probably mm -hmm. my favorite one that was like two and a half years ago which feels like forever ago now um <laughs> it, was, it was really unique because we one like we're all friends so like first and foremost anything you're, you're doing with your friends and i'm very sure you can like you know relate to it it's just always yeah. makes the process so much more enjoyable i agree with that so that that helped that cause we got to like blow up a range rover and like got to shut down the fifth street tunnel in downtown la like it was just there was a bunch of really cool things that we got to do that are was really unique so i, I really enjoyed that one and then film um actually right behind so i have obviously the zoom window up right behind it's my premiere timeline and working <laughs> on a film about my grandfather that's probably been the uh i wouldn't say the most fun one but it's been the most fulfilling one i've ever done in my life so i would say those two uh as of right now stick out in my head as like the most memorable fulfilling and, and fun all right so since you were talking about uh, a new video or film you're making, yeah, what's the process of filming one of your videos? Oh man, oh man. Uh, well, it depends. So I, I can answer this like for the film specifically, or I can answer it in more of like a casual type of YouTube video sense. It just depends on which one you want to know about. 
like casual YouTube video or likes. Yeah. So yeah. that the YouTube stuff's like pretty uh, straightforward. That is just kind of like first and foremost with any story, whether it's the film or the YouTube video, you have to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that you just have to know what you're trying to say or what the video is about. I think that's kind of first and foremost. Um, so just identifying what I'm trying to articulate to an audience, uh, what kind of the vibe is going to be, and then coming up with shots uh, that help support that, that theme. Um, the YouTube stuff is like pretty casual where there's not really much set up. It's kind of just like, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to say. Let's put a cool location, go film there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not like call times or sets or anything like that. Whereas some of my other videos, which are on my YouTube, but a lot of the commercial work I do, it's a much more formal and traditional setup where you have teams of people, there's mm -hmm. call times, uh, insurance, like all, all the boring stuff that you probably don't, don't want to know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there, there's a yin and yang to both. Like those higher end commercial stuff, you know, with the money and budgets from some of these companies, it gives you the opportunity to do some really cool things. So. Um, I guess to, to once again to answer your question really concisely it would be uh, for YouTube it's just know what you're trying to say go to a cool location film it and then edit it um, in a way that keeps people engaged and that's kind of like a step one two three process to just have a successful video pretty good answer um, so where do you see yourself in five years that's a really good one. I should ask you that. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, like, I want to try to, like, expand this podcast because I, I love doing these podcasts. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. um, I want to try and have at least, like, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube mm -hmm. and, like, start doing, like, other stuff. Nice. How many subscribers do you have now? Um, 783, something like that. Nice. When did you start? um like five years ago okay but but like the videos were like just me talking to the camera and like running around yeah so i i started going like a lot in the past three years before i would grow like 50 subscribers a year and then i started growing like 200 a year 200 a year love that man you're growing that's great this year, like 500 so it's amazing that's so great that's so yeah. great. Um, where do I see myself in five years? It's a fantastic question. Um, I have some pretty large uh, goals as far as uh, like career and finances are concerned. Um, but I think like holistically, it's it's just continuing what I'm doing now, just at a, a much broader scale. I've reached mm -hmm. a point in my career and life where I'm just I'm really content and happy where. Uh, you know, I know who I am. I know what I believe in, and I have like a really good support system of friends around me. I have a really good network of colleagues. I'm working on projects that really fulfill me, and there's really not too much else I can ask for other than you know you just take all those like key principles and foundational things that I you know very fortunately have figured out and positioned myself into, and just scale and grow everything as big as possible with you know without uh, losing my mind in the process. <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of really it. So just, you know, taking everything one day at a time, doing it the best I can day by day, and then keeping the longer term goals in mind. And, you know, hopefully everything manifests itself the way I, I think it will. Great. So what do you, what would you say are your biggest accomplishments? Mm. Uh. In which way? In like a career sense or in just a, a general sense? Career. I think it would be, I figured out a way to live life on my own terms. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest uh, success without actually pinpointing like a specific video or a specific, you know, thing I did. Um, I think it's anybody's dream to be able to wake up um, and plan their own days the way they want, work with the people they want, create the type of art they want. Um, and it's like a really special gift that I am just, I try to be as aware about it as possible and grateful for it on a consistent basis. Cause it's, I'm definitely the realize that I'm the anomaly that has been able to do that for their life. Some people go their entire lives with 
out realizing their dreams and um, being able to put themselves on that path. And I'm just, I feel really, really, really blessed and lucky that uh, I've had things go right for me that I've been able to do that. So that's probably the biggest, biggest success for me personally. Great. Um, so what do you think is the best and worst thing about YouTube? Um, well, let's, I'll start with the worst and then we'll go to the best. <laughs> Okay. We'll end on we'll end on a we'll end this question on a positive note. The worst is uh, something that's completely subjective, which is uh, you fall into the trap of views and subscribers and quantifying your success based on a external metric, um, which we all fall victim to, and I do too as well. And uh, you know, you try to put your best podcast out there, you try to have. <laughs> conversations you know i try to put out my best film and if it doesn't perform to what you expected it to you know that's always a hard pill to swallow for any creator that you talk to it doesn't matter what scale they're at you know it's all, it's all relative for some people getting five thousand views is the greatest thing in the world for <laughs> people getting a million views on something is a failure to them you know so it's, it's mm -hmm. relative in a sense so i think externalizing your value is the worst part of youtube uh, and also that the algorithm favors uh, quantity. Certain yeah, certain people, but more so quantity over, I guess, quality, but then how do you even qualify mm -hmm. what quality is? Uh, so for like, I guess the point I'm trying to make, for somebody like myself specifically who spends a year on one project, that's not a, that's not a favorable thing for a, a YouTube demo. You know what I mean? So uh it's not the worst thing in the world. That's just what it is. But that kind of coincides then with the best thing, which is, you know, it allows you to connect with people all over the world. Like you and I having this conversation right now, like how else would that have ever happened if I, you know, didn't put stuff out on YouTube or you weren't on YouTube and reached out and mm -hmm. I've made so many amazing friends and it's opened so many doors for me that uh, the positives outweigh, you know, somewhat of the cons. So. Yeah. I, I agree with all of those. Um, especially like the the one where like fall into the trap of like subscribers numbers yeah i definitely agree with that Every, and nah. everybody does man everyone you talk to <laughs> falls into that trap and if they tell you otherwise they're lying through their teeth yeah so now for the last question mm -hmm. would you do you have any advice for like aspiring filmmakers or like influencers yeah um Filmmakers or filmmakers specifically, or just anyone like trying to make it on the internet? Anyone so, trying to make it on the internet or filmmakers? A little bit of both. They yeah. kind of go hand in hand. Um, and I think what it is, is I think you just need to be authentically yourself and don't try and be anyone that you're, you're not. Um, Cause what makes you unique is, is you and it's your life and it's your story and it's your, your perspective you know for example like you being the one of the youngest podcasters in the world like that's for you that might not feel like much of anything because it's your your life but like you know to other people that's like a really cool and inspirational thing so it's never forgetting the things that make you unique um and it would also be you just got to keep trying and keep going and keep putting out content and uh, you know not get too too hard on yourself because it really is it's a it's a long it's a long game and it's a long ride so you know you just pick something that you're innately really passionate about because for some people doing a podcast like this would be work for them but I would argue that for you this is probably like really fun and enjoyable yeah. just like it it is for me and also the same thing with film like i find it enjoyable so it's not work so uh find something you like to enjoy doing do it for the long term be authentically yourself um and just like overall always be a good person and treat people right and you do that for a really long period of time like it snowballs it compounds and you know eventually you'll end up getting um, whatever it is you set up to get it just takes time and the variable that people don't like to hear is that uh you just got to be patient with it it's like it's like working really fast and really hard and doing as much as you can but being 
somewhat detach the outcome and being patient that everything will, will bring itself into fruition how it, how it needs to. If you're being authentically yourself and you're being a good person and you're working hard, it'll work itself out. That is some really good advice. But sadly, the NicoCast, this episode of NicoCast, I'm going to have to end here. Thanks so much, Matt, for joining me. I'll see you on the next episode.